For centuries, yurts have been home to herders on the Asian plateau. They continue to offer practicality and portability. Today, yurts used as second homes or studio spaces offer durability, comfort, and a barely detectable footprint. This is the modern version of an ancient nomadic structure. A combination of compression and tension form the freestanding yurt. Today, they feature all the conveniences of a modern home, including kitchens, dining areas, and lofts. The vinyl polymer roof is gradually shaped into a cone. A worker folds the polymer, laying two edges beside each other on top of a Formica board. Using a hot air welder, he melts the two edges together. A vinyl laminate valance is heat welded to the bottom perimeter of the roof, creating a watertight connection. The workers pull the entire bottom perimeter of the roof through the heat welder. In the woodworking area, a worker drills a hole in a roof rafter. With the router, he cuts a notch that will eventually fit over a support cable. Workers spray an oil finish onto the tolled rafters for aesthetics and added weatherproofing. To keep the rafter from slipping off its cable, a worker screws a keeper bolt into a brass thread in the hole. He assembles the compression ring, which sits at the top of the yurt. He screws in rafter brackets made of galvanized steel. A worker uses silicone glue to attach a rubber gasket to the bottom edge of the roof's acrylic dome. The workers rest it on the compression ring, where it will be held in place by cables and stainless steel springs. They begin preparing the yurt's lattice wall. The vertical grain pieces of Douglas fir are dipped in water-based non-toxic oil. The pieces for the lattice wall are placed in a multiple head boring machine. In one shot, it precision drills 200 identical holes through several pieces of wood. A worker begins assembling the lattice wall. As he lines up the pieces of wood, he flexes them to test their strength. The alloy rivets he places in the holes will act as hinges. He uses a pneumatic riveting machine to assemble the wall. Its load-bearing capability is extremely high. Larger yurts have walls with as many as 200 pieces, while smaller yurts have closer to 100. Once riveting is complete, the worker makes sure the wall spreads properly. On site, workers spread the lattice wall. They bolt both ends of the lattice to the door jams. A worker places the galvanized aircraft cable in the upper notch of the lattice wall. Workers attach roof rafters to the compression ring. The ring end of the rafter is attached to the brackets with a through bolt, while the wall end of the rafter attaches to the cable. The rafters are made of machined, stress-rated wood, which can withstand the weight of snow. They level the compression ring. They drape a polyester insulation lining over rafters and fasten it securely in place. They cover the insulation lining with a highly efficient reflective insulation. They seal the seam using fiberglass reinforced aluminum tape. The foil insulation rests between the lining underneath and the exterior roof. The workers now roll the vinyl laminate exterior wall around the sides of the yurt. The exterior wall is securely laced into grommets along the bottom edge of the roof valance. A worker standing in the compression ring hoists the acrylic dome up to the top of the roof and positions it on the compression ring frame. Yurt windows are sewn in with mosquito netting and have a clear vinyl covering. All in all, yurt living means never pulling up stakes.